I'm Steven Engelberg, and I'm editor-in-chief of ProPublica. I had no intention of uh, becoming a journalist, and then I got out of college and was kind of looking around about what to do, and all of my friends and sort of classmates had gone to law school, and that didn't have a lot of appeal, and so I sort of fell into journalism by accident and uh, discovered that I loved it. I guess my greatest professional accomplishment has been being part of building ProPublica because we created something from the ground floor that had never existed and nobody had any idea whether it would work and I think you know that was pretty exciting and uh, you know the the idea of building something um, you probably get one chance in your whole life to do that and that was this has been my opportunity and I'm pretty excited that it's still alive and kicking you know just getting people to join an organization that didn't exist it was a startup and so why would anybody believe it was going to succeed why would anybody believe it was going to be sustainable I mean we were asking people to leave good full-time jobs in a lot of cases and come, come you know, on, go on our excellent adventure. And so um, I think that was a challenge. And, you know, just kind of building a culture from the very beginning. You know, what's it going to be like? How's it going to work? How much daily, uh, st how many daily stories do you expect of people? What does a successful year look like? I mean, everything that you're doing, you're creating out of a whole cloth and making it up. And so I think, you know, all those things were, were challenges. And I, I like to think we're still inventing ourselves. The story that we did that I really was most excited about was the thing we did on New Orleans police shootings. These shootings of uh, civilians by the police of New Orleans after Katrina. And it took a lot of effort to track that down. We were many obstacles in the way. And I felt like, you know, the Justice Department came in and kind of took over the police department and felt like we had a lot of impact and we brought some change. And along the way, we even uh, found uh, the identity of a guy who attempted to murder somebody and we, we got him uh, arrested and uh, convicted. So I felt that was, th those were pretty exciting things. You, don't, you sure don't do that every day. My reporter in that case was particularly smart about understanding that people have been traumatized and that we're, you know, our first role to go into a place like that is, is to help people not be harmful. And so he spent you know, many weeks just talking to people without a notebook, um, getting to know people, building trust. You can have a terrible effect as a journalist if you're not careful, and I think you just have to be self-aware that you know, this may be the only contact these people are ever gonna have with a reporter, and how do, you, how do you want them to remember it, and how do you want them to feel about it? When I look at um, you know, the journalism today is often, can be done online, you, you can learn things in a, in a Twitter message, and you can learn things from Facebook, Instant Messenger. Um, but it's still really valuable to talk to people. And I think spending time with people and, and gaining uh, their trust and building a relationship, that's how you get real stories. And I think just because you can use technology to cut things short doesn't mean you should. So I try to encourage you know, young reporters all the time to, to go out and do interviews, meet people. Uh, don't necessarily expect that every interview is going to be a transaction that's going to produce news, you know, except the fact that you're going to go out and you're not going to always know what the story is and you're going to hear something that you didn't know. And that's what news is going to be.